everybody, it's Webby and welcome to another video. Today we're looking at the brand new 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe. We've got the entry level model here, which is one of the cars you might find if you went and hired a car for a holiday or something like that. But actually, when you look at all the tech and the features and the safety equipment that this car comes with, you've got to ask yourself the question, do you really need anything other than the base model? And today's video, we're actually going to find out the answer to that question. Now, Hyundai Australia have kindly lent me the car for the week, so I've had a good time um, to actually get used to the car, learn all the features of technology, what it drives like, the fuel economy. Um, so in this in-depth review, we're going to find out everything you need to know about this brand new Hyundai Santa Fe. And the first thing you might want to know is how much this car costs. In 2024, nothing's really cheap anymore. Even small cars like a Toyota Yaris are pushing $30,000. So when you look at a seven-seat family SUV with a hybrid powertrain, you probably think it's going to be really, really expensive. This particular car that I've been driving for the week is only $61,500 as a driveway offer at the moment. And when you say only $61,000, yes, that's still a lot of money, but you're actually getting a lot of car for your money. Certainly when we go inside and look at some of the tech that this car's got, some of the features, the powertrain, which is obviously hybrid, it then all starts to sort of add up and actually represent okay value for money. And that's why I say you don't really need to go any further than the base model because this comes with so much standard equipment that really the base model will do everything you need to do unless you particularly want some of the features available on the higher grade models. So anyway, let's get around to having a look around this brand new Santa Fe hybrid. And let me tell you everything I've found out in the last week of driving this car. So the obvious place to start on the outside of the car is actually at the front. The Santa Fe has been completely redesigned from the old model and it's one of those looks you're either going to like it or probably not. I actually quite like it. It has got a little bit of Land Rover Defender for a look about it um, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because the Defender is a good looking car. So anyway, front styling. As I said, it's very square and boxy. We've got these new design headlights with a sort of H pattern, uh, which look very striking at night when the car is driving towards you. Um, and then this grille sort of, again, very sort of square and blocky and that type of thing, but a really good looking design. In terms of features at the front, uh, we've actually got 360 cameras on this base model. So you've got your camera there at the front, We've got front parking sensors. Um, again, some cars don't get this on base models. So level of equipment is really, really impressive for such an entry level model. While we're here, let's talk about what's under the bonnet. Uh, so hybrid powertrain, a 1.6 turbo petrol engine, uh, obviously linked to an electric motor and a battery. Total output is 172 kilowatt and 367 newton meters of torque. And the fuel economy is rated at 5.6 liters per 100 kilometers. There's a 67 litre fuel tank, and with a bit of quick maths, that's just under 1,200 kilometres for a full tank. And that's really, really impressive. That's something that you'd expect from like a small hatchback, like a Golf or an i30 or you know, a Corolla or something like that. Um, so really impressive fuel economy for such a big car. Now when we get to the end of the video, we're going to have a look at the average fuel consumption that I've managed to achieve for the whole week I've been driving the car. Um, because I've still got a bit of driving and running around to do before I give the keys back today. Um, so when we get to the end, yeah, we'll have a look and see what the average fuel consumption has been. But up to date, it's actually been really, really impressive. Now let's talk about maintenance and running costs next. Like all Hyundai models, it comes with a five-year unlimited mileage warranty. Servicing is every 12 months or 10,000 Ks, not 15, for a lot of their models. Servicing is capped at 495 per service for the first five years. But you can also go on the website after that and it will give you the cost for each service for the lifetime of the vehicle. Roadside assistance is also included, again, automatically for 12 months, but as long as you keep servicing at a Hyundai main dealership, you'll get roadside assistance for the life of the car. And I think it's a really strong offering because everybody needs roadside assistance just in case you break down or have a flat or lock yourself out or run out of fuel. So that's actually really, really good sort of aftercare from Hyundai uh, and something you need to consider as a potential owner. Right, we're now around to the side of the car and we can see more of that boxy theme continuing all along the side of the car. We've got this sort of very sort of boxy styling to the wheel arches. The car is sort of very sort of slab sided if you like. There's no sort of lines and creases or anything like that. And the rear tailgate is very vertical. It's not sort of one of those slanted ones that you get on some cars these days. Um, so that means that headroom in the back of the car and obviously boot space in the back is maximized because you're not having to deal with sloping windows and that type of thing. 
Now we've also got some more standard equipment to talk about around the side of the car. Obviously we've got things like keyless entry, We've got the camera there on the side of the mirror. I mentioned the 360 cameras earlier. Uh, we've also got the side sensors there as well because you've got the active park assist. And we've also got 20 inch alloy wheels, something that you very rarely find on an entry level car. And I have to say, I really do like the design of those wheels. Not only do they look good, but they would be really easy to clean as well, uh, which is another big bonus if you don't like cleaning your car. Anyway, so yeah, styling from the side and the features on the side of the car I think are really, really impressive. And then finally coming around to the back of the new Santa Fe, that square styling continues. I actually do like the back of this car, it's really, really nice. They've gone down the, the sort of new trendy route of having the big letters across the middle of the tailgate. We've got LED rear lights, again with that H pattern um, that we saw on the front lights earlier on. Uh, the rear camera just built into the tailgate there. Then the bottom section, we've also got the rear parking sensors. Um, so it's got all the usual bits and pieces uh, on the back of the car. Uh, the tailgate is electric, which I wasn't expecting for an entry-level car. Most cars with an electric tailgate are sort of mid-range or top of the range these days. So it's unusual to find something like that on an entry-level model. And you can do that off of the key by simply pressing the button on the remote key fob. Talking of key fobs, I really don't like these new sort of pebble-shaped keys that are Hyundai giving out these days. They look a bit sort of cheap and tacky and they scratch quite easily. Just looking at this key here, it's got quite a few scratches on it. Um, anyway, right, so now with the boot open, uh, there's a couple of buttons up here, obviously one to lower your tailgate, but the one on the right hand side of it, if you press that, will shut the tailgate and then lock the car as well. So you can literally press a button, walk away, and everything's closed and locked for you, which is actually quite handy. Right, so now with the tailgate open, let's have a look inside the boot. Uh, we do get this nice cargo cover as well, which is quite nice. Again, not expected on an entry level model. Uh, you can just slide that back to obviously expose the boot floor. Um, in terms of space, 628 litres with the second row in place. If you fold the middle row of seats down, 1,949 litres of carrying capacity, and it's really, really impressive. Once I've done this bit of the filming, I'm actually going to show you some of the features inside the boot as well. There's actually quite a lot of stuff in the back of this car. So that cargo blind actually comes out, it's quite easy. You literally just grab the side of it, pull it, and it comes out quite simply. So let's just pop that on the floor for the second. Um, that's as simple as it takes to fold up the back seats. So really, really easy. You're not gonna get much behind the back seats though. Once those seven seats are in place, you've got a tiny amount of carrying capacity behind the rear passengers but then you can't have everything, can you? You can't have seven seats and seven people's luggage, so one or the other. Um, but either way, to pull them down, again, just pull the little handle, drops back down, nice flat load floor, nice and easy. The one thing you do get on the Santa Fe, which um, a lot of cars nowadays get either no spare wheel or a space saver spare wheel, you actually get a full size spare wheel on the Santa Fe, which is really, really good. Under this little flap here, that's simply things like just your tool kit and your jack. Uh, so nothing really in terms of storage under there. Let me show you some of the features in the boot next, because yeah, some cool stuff in here. All right, so let's look inside the boot then. Uh, over on the right hand side here, the first thing you'll find really useful is these two buttons, which once you press them, will actually fold the rear seats down for you. So let's try the left hand one. If you press the button, and there you go, nice and flat. Same for the right hand side, and there you go. There is your full 1,949 litres. Excuse my shadow, the sun is low in the sky today. Uh, and yeah, filming the winter in Australia isn't the easiest. But there you go, lots and lots of space inside this new Santa Fe. Uh, like I say, we've got the buttons there to fold the seats down. Third row passengers also benefit from a USB-C fast charging point. Uh, then you've got the air vent there so you can get the air conditioning in the third row. Uh, and also the dial there so you can select the fan speed. Um, so lots of nice amenities back here. Over on the left hand side we've then got also a 12 volt power socket, uh, another USB-C charging point uh, and the air vent for the left hand side passenger. So people in the back really don't miss out in this brand new Santa Fe. So let's have a full walk around of the car then so you can get a full idea of what this thing looks like. Uh, it's a very striking design, so very square and boxy. Uh, but I happen to think it's a really good looking car. Uh, so look at that side profile, it's very sort of Land Rover Defender, uh, as is the back of the car, which again is no bad thing, because that's a good looking car. 
Uh, what do you think? Put something in the comments below. Let me know what you think to this new Santa Fe. Uh, and in a second, we're going to jump inside and have a look at some of the features of this brand new Santa Fe. So there you go. That is a bit about the outside of the new Santa Fe. Let's have a look inside now because there's so much going on inside this base model. Uh, I think you'll be really impressed with the amount of standard equipment on this car in terms of infotainment, safety and all the tech. Um, so yeah, let's jump inside and have a look at the car. Uh, if you're enjoying the video, give it a like and share it with your friends. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, because that will tell you every time a new video comes out. So let's jump inside. All right, so um, anybody asking, this color is blue pebble or pebble blue, one of the two. Um, either way, pretty striking looking color, I quite like it suits the car it's very sort of subdued but looks quite classy um, another thing i didn't notice earlier is actually a little santa fe badge there and uh, not sure how well that's picking up on the camera uh, but yeah little santa fe badge there on the wing um, but yeah let's jump inside as i said keep the entry you also get the blue link system that's the app you can get on your phone so you can do things like remote start your car and the first thing i thought when i opened the door of this car when i picked it up last week when i looked at the seats the words Golf GTI spring to mind because it's got this lovely sort of tartan finish uh, on the seats with this sort of mix of dark grey bolster on the sides. I really like this. Uh, I know it might not be to everybody's taste, uh, but I really, really like it. Um, the seats themselves are really supportive. As I said, you've got the bolsters down here on the sides uh, and also in the rib cage area there. Uh, and also, they're fully electric. Didn't expect that on a base model either. Um, so you're up and down, in and out. Um, obviously your backrest and you also got lumbar support there as well which is really really cool um, we don't get memory on the base model but that's okay uh, we've all got the standard uh, buttons there for your windows and your mirrors so pretty standard stuff um, plastics aren't too bad on this car either they're sort of fairly decent they're not sort of cheap or anything like that uh, sort of fairly soft touch there on the top of the doors uh, we've got a few buttons down here uh, just below the right hand side of the dashboard uh, you've got your electronic handbrake your stability control your button there to open the tailgate from inside the car uh, and also uh, i think just make that out there for the sun coming in uh, that's the headlight level adjustment switch just in case you happen to fill up the back of the car with passengers or luggage or whatever um, but there you go look at the dash how cool does that look very futuristic uh, and very different from the previous model santa fe uh, so let's jump in and have a look uh, and tell you all about the new tech inside this car. All right, so start button is just over here on the right hand side. So foot on the brake, brings the car into life. All right, we're back. I just had to turn off my Apple CarPlay um, because this car's got wireless Apple CarPlay, my phone connected to the car as soon as I turn the ignition on. Um, that's a good thing because it shows that it works really, really quickly. Um, but when you're trying to record a video, not so good because instead of recording to my phone, it would have come through the car. Anyway, um, Lovely leather steering wheel straight in front of the driver. Again, got a bit of a Land Rover Defender feel about it with this sort of badge here in the middle, which doesn't really say that this is a Hyundai. Um, again, very square sort of looking. So yeah, it's um, a yeah, bit of a Land Rover ripoff, but no bad thing. Buttons on the left-hand side will do your cruise control, your lane keeping aid. Uh, and on the right-hand side is your volume and your phone buttons. Uh, so pretty standard stuff. Uh, you'll need to know some of these buttons. So you can turn off some of the safety stuff too. Um, so definitely worth paying attention to those. Uh, we've got this little thing here in the middle. That's your driver attention warning. So if you don't pay attention to the road or what you're doing, the um, car will start beeping at you uh, as per most cars these days. The digital display in front of the driver is really nice. Again, base model, didn't really expect it to be full digital. Um, but yeah, 12.3 inch screen there in the center. The gauge on the side, being that this is a hybrid, um, shows you, like most hybrids do, whether you're using power, whether you're putting charge back into the battery. Um, so again, you can kind of see what the car's actually doing. The center display, as most cars, will give us a trip computer, uh, which is quite handy. Um, if I flick through that just for a second. Uh, so there you go. If I just zoom in slightly. So since I picked the car up last week, I've done 197 kilometers uh, at an average of 6.4 liters per 100. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, we'll have a look uh, when we get to the end of the day and have to can the keys back, uh, just to see what the average is of the whole week, because from where I am to dropping the car off, most of it is freeway, uh, so that should help the fuel economy a little bit. Uh, over to the left-hand side, we've obviously got the digital speedo, uh, and as you can see there, I've got 908 kilometres left of range in the bottom 
uh, part of the screen just there. Uh, the fuel gauge has actually hardly moved. Uh, it's actually quite impressive because, well, yeah, you can see it looks like it's still full and I've driven nearly 200 kilometers. Um, so the range in this car is really, really impressive. Uh, so from that display there, we then come over to 12.3 inch display for the infotainment system. This is really, really good too. Pretty standard stuff for Hyundai, wireless CarPlay. You do have to plug it in if you want to use Android Auto. Uh, good reason to buy an iPhone. Uh, I've disconnected mine for the moment just so I can actually record this video. But it's pretty standard stuff. It's quite easy to use. Um, yeah, nothing too, too complicated. It's a, it's a good system. I do like this new Hyundai infotainment system. But then coming down below that, we've got all the climate control buttons. Uh, again, it looks a little bit Land rover -y. I'm going to keep mentioning that. One thing I didn't expect to see on this car, I mean, it's got dual zone climate control, which I did expect. But that button there is for heated seats. A base model car with heated seats. Uh, that's really, really cool. Uh, then we've got things like the auto hold for the handbrake. We've got drive modes. Uh, hill descent control uh, you can then operate the uh, with 360 cameras uh, and also turn off the parking sensors coming below that we've then got the storage area here uh, on the base model this side is your wireless charger uh, as you go further up the range this also becomes a wireless charger as well so you get two wireless chargers um, but we've still got USB-C um, sorry we've still got two USB-C fast charging points there as well uh, so there's plenty of options for charging your phone um, if there's obviously a couple of people two or three people in the car not a problem at all uh, then we come to a couple of cup holders uh, pretty decent sizes there uh, and then behind that we've got a nice padded armrest uh, which when you lift that up plenty of storage space into there uh, so that's nice and cool as well we've also got a secondary little glove box here which you can open with this button so you've got a bit more storage just in there and then just down there your normal glove box there so there's plenty of storage in this car and actually have a look at how big the pockets are in the doors you could easily get a really decent sized bottle of water or something in there and um, so yeah actually lots and lots of storage space in the front uh, of this new santa fe now if you're wondering where the gear selector is well it's actually just there to the right of the steering wheel so it's just a twist so you basically grab the end of the stalk twist it to go forward for drive backwards to go into reverse and on the end there's a button that you press to turn the uh, to put it into park uh, and basically put the uh, handbrake on so yeah very very easy to use uh, and actually get used to as well so now you're in the driver's seat you actually find this is a really comfortable place to be one thing i really really do like about hyundai's and they put on a lot of their cars is the sun visor when you fold it round it's a decent size because it hangs down quite a way but you can also slide it along because on sometimes in the winter, you get this section here, it just creeps in and gets you in the corner of the eye. Uh, so I really do like that feature on Hyundai, so it's fantastic. Uh, I wish more brands actually made that. Anyway, the rest of the car inside is really good. Visibility outside is good, and also at the front, you've got acres and acres of headroom. I mean, I'm only five foot six, I'm always gonna have lots of headroom. Um, but even if you're over six foot, you're never really gonna touch the ceiling in this car. Um, so yeah, really good for tall passengers. Um, yeah, the steering wheel feels really nice as well. Um, all the displays are laid out nicely, nothing's too complicated. Uh, it's actually a really, really nice interior. Let's now have a look in the back because there's some cool features in there for rear passengers too. The rear door opens nice and wide. It's really easy to get into the Santa Fe. You don't have to step up too high. The ceiling height isn't too bad either, so you don't have to duck down too far. Uh, but again, you get plenty of headroom here in the back. The leg room is really, really spacious as well. I can't, oh, I can just about get my feet under the driver's seat. If I lifted it up slightly, uh, I could really stretch my legs out on a long journey. Uh, but as you can see, acres and acres of space in the back of this car. Um, you can even bring the seat forward a little bit. So when you've got the third, third row up in position, um, it creates a bit more space for the people in the back. But yeah, even if you did that, I've still got plenty of leg room. Now in terms of amenities back here, we've actually got two decent sized cup holders in the side of the door. Uh, the air vent is actually there on the B pillar. Uh, some cars come down from the ceiling, some come from the middle. Uh, but yeah, it's here on the B pillar in the back of the Santa Fe. Uh, we've got a little bit of uh, a flap there so you can store stuff down there as well. The center console storage, you can actually access from the back of the car. So you squeeze this little handle here and there's some storage there 
so you can slide stuff in and out. And also the top part of the center console, you can push the button to lift up and then access whatever the front passengers have put inside that little cubby hole uh, in the middle between the front passenger and driver's seat. On the sides of the seats for the two rear passengers, there's actually a USB-C charging point on either of the seats. Uh, so again, more charging points in the back of the car, uh, which these days is really handy because if you've got kids or adults in the back, they're always gonna be on devices and what have you, and they'll always need charging. So to have the USB-C in the back of the car is really, really cool. The actual seats themselves, again, really comfortable. Still liking this Titan pattern. I'm a bit of a sucker for that type of thing. Um, you don't get too much of a transmission tunnel either. Uh, this is the front wheel drive model. Uh, I'm not sure what it would be like in the all wheel drive version. Uh, but yeah, the floor is pretty flat. So even if you're sat in the middle, you're not gonna have your knees around your ears uh, be really uncomfortable. You do get obviously a fold down armrest with a couple of cup holders in there as well. Uh, then you've got the ISO fix mounting points if you wanna put a child seat in the back. Now the last thing I wanna show you about the back of the car is how easy it is for rear passengers to get into the third row. So on the middle row, down the bottom, you've got this little button here, which when you press it, let me come back a little bit there, you press the button and it literally slides the seat and folds it at the same time, making it easy for rear passengers to get in the back of the car. So the best part of the review now is to actually go and drive the car, uh, see what it's like out on the open road and give you my thoughts and opinions uh, on that. So let's get going, let's go for a drive. Uh, we're actually on the way to take the car back and hand the keys back and pick my car up. Um, so that's a good time to do the driving section of the video. Now being that this is a hybrid, so it's a, a 1.6 turbo petrol with the electric motor, you can say 172 kilowatt at 367 newton meters total output. So it's actually a decent amount of power. So out on the road then, the first thing you need to do when you get into one of these new Santa Fe's if you like I me, mean, you don't like too much intrusion from the safety equipment, is turn some of it off. Thankfully, it's not too difficult to do. There's a button on the steering wheel. We can turn off the lane keeping aid, so you literally just hold that for a couple of seconds. The little light on the dash will go orange, and then that's switched off. You do have to do that every time you get in the car, though. The other thing you can do is there's a little star button on the steering wheel. So it's a button where you can choose what you want that button to do when you press it and one of the things you can choose it to do is take you into the safety um, sort of equipment on the infotainment screen so once you press that it'll come up with the driver assistance details uh, you then press the little speed limit button uh, change it to speed limit information and then it will still display the speed limit of the road that you're on but it won't beep at you every time you go one kilometer over the speed limit, um, which obviously is very easy to do. So that's those bits done, we can now enjoy the journey. So initial impressions of driving this car, it's very quiet, it's very smooth. The hybrid drivetrain switches from electric to petrol slash hybrid very smoothly. You hear the engine kick in, but there's no sort of fuss or anything like that. Um, so it's actually quite a nice experience to drive. The suspension is fairly firm, but I think that's a good thing because it means it doesn't roll when it goes around corners. And also the steering is nicely weighted as well. Um, a lot of sort of big SUVs, the steering is over assisted, so it feels very light, which is good at low sort of speeds for parking. But when you get sort of up to freeway speeds, you don't want the steering to be too light. So they've done a good job of tuning the steering. Uh, making it sort of nice and drivable. I'm actually impressed at how often the car would just run along on pure electric mode as well. Uh, the battery is only 1.49 kilowatt. But yeah, I'm amazed at how often you're just driving along, even at sort of 80 k's an hour, it's in full electric mode. Um, so that obviously does help towards that awesome fuel consumption figure. And it's pretty quiet in here as well. Considering this car has got 20 inch alloy wheels, you'd expect to be, you know, sort of fighting against a little bit of tire noise or road noise. But considering it's got those big wheels, it's actually really, really impressive. As you'd expect of a car introduced in 2024, we've got the full complement of safety equipment on this new Santa Fe. 
Um, so you've got 10 airbags, you've got adaptive cruise, you've got blind spot monitor, autonomous braking, reverse brake assist, rear cross traffic alert. The list goes on and on. Um, there's really nothing missing here that you'd need uh, for everyday use. When I read the specs of this car in terms of the engine, I was worried that a 1.6 turbo petrol hybrid was going to be a bit underpowered because obviously you know, it's a seven seat SUV, it's a pretty decent size. And I was worried that, yeah, there's gonna be a bit lack in there. But in the week I've been driving it, I've actually been quite impressed with the performance. I mean, it's an SUV, you're not gonna be going around racetracks and trying to find your nearest twisty road and go for a blast on a Sunday morning. It's not that type of car. But now and again, you do want a bit of performance. You wanna be able to overtake or get up a hill and it does that perfectly well. The one thing Hyundai have started to do really well recently is base models. I drove the Hyundai Kona a little while ago as a base model, and I was really, really impressed with that as well. And this Santa Fe is no different. It's got loads of standard equipment, it's things you wouldn't expect on a base model. It drives really well. It's just like, why do you need to buy anything other than a base model? I know a lot of people want all the gadgets and the leather interior and the sunroofs and stuff. But if you don't need that stuff or your budget doesn't stretch to that, the base model is a perfectly good option. Now don't get me wrong, $61,500 is a lot of money for a car. You can also get this base model as an all-wheel drive for another $3,000, $64,500. This real competitor is obviously the Toyota Kluger. And the base model of that is only all-wheel drive and starts at $67,000 and doesn't get some of the equipment as standard that you get on the Santa Fe. So not only is it good value for money, it's cheaper than a Toyota Kluger, which is everybody's default for a hybrid SUV. So in actual fact, this makes much more sense than buying a Toyota Kluger. There you go, thought I'd never say that. And if towing's your thing, they even do a bit of towing as well. Not masses, obviously, because it's a hybrid. 1,650 kilos. But for some people, it might just be enough. If you want to go down the tip with a 6x4 trailer or go to Bunnings, it does the job for you. So when you compare this against the Kluger, there's other bits and pieces in this base model that would make you think, why would I buy a Kluger? You get the same infotainment screen, you get the same digital dash as you get in the older models throughout the rest of the range. So it makes the base model feel like it's not a base model. When you're getting a base model Toyota Kluger, you've got a tiny little screen for your infotainment system, and it really feels like a base model. Um, yeah, I, I can't see any reason why you'd buy a Kluger over this, I really can't. Um, I mean, a lot of people do because it's the default car if you wanna buy a hybrid SUV. I don't think so anymore. If I was looking to buy a hybrid SUV, I would happily buy one of these, no problems. So I'm just about to go and give the keys back to the Santa Fe. And uh, I said I'd update you on the fuel consumption situation. So the week I drove the car, uh, I did 266 kilometers uh, at an average of 6.2 liters per 100, uh, according to the fuel computer on a display in the car. Um, just filled it up with fuel, which you always do when you uh, hand back a press car. Um, I had to put 15 litres worth of fuel in, uh, which is really good for a whole week's worth of driving the car. It cost me less than $28. Current price of that was 185.9. So really cheap motoring for a seven seat family SUV uh, and a really, really impressive car. Uh, I've had a great week with this car. Um, and yeah, kind of like, I don't want to give the keys back, which is strange for a seven seat SUV. Uh, it's not a sports car or anything like that but I've just really enjoyed driving the car. Um, so that brings us to an end of the video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a like and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell to find out when the next video review goes live. If you've got any questions about this car, leave them in the comments section for me below and I will answer them as soon as I can for you. That just leaves me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon in the next video.